Well, does that happen to you? How frustrating and annoying is that? You've just been working on your piece of wood and what have you, and you try to plant the ends of your timber and, and it all breaks off. Yeah, so it's not great, is it? But there is a way. So watch this video and uh, we'll go through the techniques regarding planing end grain. Well, welcome to my woodworking channel, Wally Bois, or should I say, Bonjour. The place you will learn tips and tricks and projects from me. Woodworking since 1989. And you know what to do? Hammer that subscribe button. Let's get back to the video. Okay, if we want to actually plane our end grain, we have to be careful. Because if we put, just put it in the vice like so, it's just fine. Oh, look, it's in the vice. Isn't that great? We grab our hand plane and plane the end, which I'm about to do, we have a problem. We get a thing called breakout. Now, although this is not very exaggerated, there is actually a certain amount of breakout here. Which we don't really want. You could use a smooth and plain or a Stanley Bailey number no. seven like I have, and you're at more risk of getting more aggressive breakout. Remember, this is a low angle plane, and you get a lot less breakout with that. But ideally, you'd have your sacrificial block. So let's try it without the sacrificial block, but with the Stanley Bailey. Oh, I love that plane. But we get more breakout, more aggressive breakout. And th in this case, the grain's in this case the grain's quite straight and quite so bad. If you're using a piece of wood, like for instance, got a knot in it, like so, you're at more risk. So if we now try this one, this bit of wood, see what happens. You have an angular direction to your grain and you get a lot of breakout like so which is quite severe in this case um, so the, obviously the choice of timber does matter it's okay if you're going to be ripping it down to whip off afterwards so if you if you are making little boxes or whatever if you think ahead you can plane that then rip to whip so don't rip to whip then plane that that's my point there but you don't necessarily have to do that either what you can do is if, for instance, you want to play in a piece of wood like the bit here, which is a simple piece of wood, you can use a piece of sacrificial timber. And all you do is you put it in the vise, we've got sacrificial timber behind it, and just so you can see, with that piece of wood squeezed up behind it, you won't get that breakout. You shouldn't do, and if you do, it'd be a very, very tiny amount. So if I show you that, so we do that. You can't get a device. Not if you low in the voice, but not so low that you catch your fingers on the voice. Right. So that sacrificial piece there is pretty much in line. If it's about half a mil down, it would still do its job because obviously it'd be supporting the back edge. So then we get our hand plane. In this case, it's a number seven Bailey. You could use a smooth plane or even a low angle block plane or a low angle smoothing plane, such as a Lee Nielsen or something like that. But this is my number seven. I'm doing it because it's a bit more aggressive. Now, what you have to remember, point to remember, is that a low angle block plane actually isn't that much lower than one of these and to do with the which way up the bevel goes with this the bevel's under so we have the 45 degree of the frog here that, where the, the blade is mounted that means it's 45 degrees but with a low angle block plane 
the well, not technically a frock, but the, where the blade, the angle of of the um, blade is at that twenty five degrees, and then twenty five degrees, or twelve degrees, I can't remember now. But the total anyway, the, with that you add that and the bevel angle together because the blade is bevel down, bevel up. the bevel up. <laughs> the blade, on a block that no, on a low angle block plane, the bevel's up. You add together the bevel angle or the cutter angle of the plane iron and where the plane and the angle of the plane itself. So, anyway. so you end up with about 36 degree angle with your low angle block plane compared to the 45 of your um, Stanley Bailey. So there's not a huge difference in it, really. So it's not as low as you think it is. It might look a lot lower, but she technically isn't that low. So, here we go. So what I'm going to do is run this over the end of the piece of wood. A slight angle I'm doing. Even though it's not doing it straight on, I'm doing a slight angle. So you're getting that slicing. So if you were going, I had a knife, you wouldn't necessarily have it at 90 degrees to your workpiece. You might have it at a slight angle and that would cut the fibres better. So what you do is with end grain, you tend to have it 22, 25 degrees-ish, as long as you're covering the end of the piece of wood. Oh, I'm gonna have to sort that. I keep forgetting. But there you go. So, passes over the end there to its full length. Normally, you'd have a mark that you've placed around the piece of wood with um, a square to work to. But this is just for just to show you how to stop the breakout. But still going. Don't have to. But I am. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so there's our piece of wood and our sacrificial piece of wood. Yeah? And as you can see, there's no breakout at all. Yeah? Because this has done the job of the shooting board option and it's literally a clamping. Once you've got it in the vice, you're literally clamping the fibres tight to the block of wood that you're planing and hence you get no breakout so anyway that's how you can plane your end grain wear a shooting board and uh don't do it like this one because this is something you've got to watch out for because although i was in doing the demonstration it's not square on the end so you, you, you will need to put a mark around with a marking knife and a pencil to show you where to plane to in this case as you can see uh, and I can see that, as you can see that, there's a gap under that edge here because I haven't planed it square. But there you go, I wasn't trying to, to be honest. So, so I'm going to plane this end of this piece of timber on the end grain using a thing called the shooting board. Just show you it, but here we go. This is my shooting board, which I've made, and it's literally cut the bits of pine for board, and you can make it up anything really. But the slot on the side here, this rebate. So I'm popping it in the vice. Now, see the bottom here, it's got that bit of wood there, it goes in the vice. Drop that into the vice like so. I haven't shown you how to make one because there isn't any point. It's pretty obvious really, isn't it, what it is and how it works. So, but the thing I would say is you have to make sure that your shooting board, you make it for the plane that you're going to use. And that's the only plane you're going to use with it. The reason for that is the distance from the plane iron, like in this case, and the edge of the plane itself, isn't the same on every single plane. This distance from here to there, sort of that little bit of distance there is different, is greater than what it is on this smoothing plane. So if you can make one for your smoothing plane, make it for the smoothing plane. Now, whether that's important is when it's sitting on here like so, and run back and forth, you don't want that plane iron planing the actual guide of your shooting board. So you don't want that cutting that, so there's nothing coming off. If I use this one on here, because it's closer, it's actually going to cut. It's got to plane a little bit off the edge of this each time. And all it does is you end up with a curve in that, because you, yeah, it just it won't work for you. So this one's been designed for use with my sturdy baby number seven. So 
So how I use it, I grab my piece of wood, hold it up against your fence here, and you have to kind of work it where you want it to be. There you go. Sort of flush, just slightly proud. And you can try and hold it and do it that way. But I like to use the hole then, which I have here. I have one. Here's one I prepared earlier. So let's just hold down onto there like so. Yeah, and that this one, this particular hole down goes into my bench. You can get a hole down put onto this, so it clamps onto there, but they're not that effective. These things are good. These um record hold downs are very good indeed. So now I should be able to plane the end of the piece of wood. Okay, once you are planed that piece of so let's have a go. Ah. So let's have a go at planing the end of this piece of wood. So grab your plane. I'm sitting down doing this because otherwise I'll chop my head off. All right, and you literally run it backwards and forwards over the end of your piece of wood. <sighs> really got to sort these lights out. <laughs> So at the moment, it's not actually making any contact with the piece of wood that we want to plane. So easy way of adjustment, a bit like you would do with a, a wooden hand plane where you have to use a, either a little mallet or a rubber mallet to um, tap the back of the plane to either make the blade come out or go in. We're going to use a hammer here, use a mallet, a hammer, not just literally just hit the end of your piece of wood. This bit was quite short. But you just tap the end and that move it along a little bit. So now to make contact. Do you hear that? Make contact. So we, one point you have to remember is for this to work properly, so you end up with a 90 degree um, planed end, these shoulders here have to be 90 degrees to the actual sole. If they're not, you're going to be putting an angle onto this. Don't forget, if you use one of these shooting boards, have a bit of candle wax handy and you can just run up and down like this so like madmen <laughs> and not even on your plane you know and that gives you a little bit of lubricant and that helps you slide backwards and forwards <laughs> so literally pass it backwards and forwards across the end of your piece of wood you hear that that's making nice contact with the piece of wood Take a very small shave off each time. Now, you could just set the plane iron a little bit deeper as you go. The other thing you've got to be careful of is that your angle on your plane iron is set correctly. Otherwise, you'll put an angle onto. So think, consider that as being this piece here. Let me show you. This lever here moves. The plane iron in two different directions, either leans one way or the other. Well, we want it straight because we want a 90 degree cut. So you make sure that's straight on there. Yep. And it's tasking here and chipping this piece of wood, which is sacrificial. Like, so I can remove that and chuck it away and put another one on later if I want. Should be planed now, and hopefully there's no breakout. How about that? No breakout. So you think the other end? Nasty breakout. That end, no breakout. So that's why we have a shooting board. So if your back fence here is set 90 degrees to this channel, your, your end should be 90 degrees, which it is. Now, if you have an issue in the sense that every time you take it off, it's got a bit of an angle to it, the most likely cause of that is that you've had the lever set slightly one way or the other. So the first few passes, you should really just check that you've got that set correctly. So that's at 90 degrees. But anyway, that is my um, end grain shooting board. Really simple. Remember, you can make these at 45 degrees or 22 and a half degrees if you want as well. So you can clean up. So if you're doing framing, what have you, you can clean up your joints. So that's that. Anyway. <laughs> So, I hope you found that of interest and helpful. 
and that you're going to go out there and make your own, because they are good things, really handy to have, just like a bench hook or anything like that. Um, but if you've got kind, you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Well, you managed to get to the end of my video, so I assume I must have grabbed your attention, or you just couldn't be bothered to click off. So, hammer that like button, hammer that subscribe button, and comment below. <laughs> Yeah, and click that little bell, because then you get a nice little <laughs> little buzzy hum in your pocket, and that'd be me uploading another video. So, thank you for watching, and keep on woodworking, and keep on learning. <laughs>